Each and every one of us fall somewhere in that spectrum between male and female. We've got absolute male, whatever that might be, absolute female, and then we've got people moving together, the androgynous ones, intersex. They're caught in between, and society cannot see them and judge them just for who they are. To be intersex is to be born um, physically such that it's not really possible to say this is a boy or this is a girl. It's taken as read, isn't it? A baby's born is either a boy or a girl, an instantaneous decision. And increasingly these days, parents know that information before the baby's born. Well, you can imagine the distress that happens when a baby's born. You can't give that instant uh, information. It's real. Get used to it. We exist. In the animal kingdom, hermaphrodites are not that rare, for instance, like the snail. And there's also a fish species that actually changes male to female at some point in their lives. The, the real focus is on the biology. Many are born with a variation towards one side of the spectrum or the other. They may have male genitalia, but internally they have ovaries, or they may have ambiguous genitalia, where you can't really tell what it is because everything is still inside of them. Male reproductive problems um, are extremely common, whether they present at birth or in a young man. And um, that's really sort of unexplained. Um, and I think what we've come to understand is that the process of making a male, what makes you and me, as opposed to us developing as female, is a process that's, if you like, bound to go wrong some of the time. So there are many, many uh, departures from what is called the typical image we conjure up in our mind of what is a male and what is a female. I've counted around 40 or 50 different types of abnormalities in humans in the medical literature, each with a different name, a different syndrome for sexual development. Since the 1960s, generations of intersex children have been surgically reassigned to a sex that seems to be the easiest for surgery to achieve. We can reassign kids at birth and we can turn them into whatever gender we want and it's not going to have any adverse consequences. Dr. Diamond was the person that said, no, that is not the case. Some years ago with a colleague, uh, Hazel Bay, I worked on a paper that uh, introduced intersexuality uh, to the medical uh, community. What we're talking about are the natural varieties of human condition. Nature loves variety. Unfortunately, society doesn't always do it. When people talk about female genital mutilation, they usually apply it to these immigrants are doing this. All these people that live in places like Africa and India are doing this. And this could never happen here, but it is happening here. It just has a different name. It's called surgical reassignment. The most progressive government in terms of intersex and the issue of a third gender is actually the Australian government. The Australian government now has to where you don't have to classify yourself as a male or a female on your passport. You can put an X on your passport and that's a third gender. In the UK, a member of the House of Lords, Lord Stevenson of Balmacara, himself an intersex person, wants the law to be changed. I suffer from hyperspadias, which is not a very well-known condition affecting mainly boys, though it does affect girls as well. And uh, it, it's a, pro a problem that, that uh, probably now about one in 150, one in 200 boys are born with every year. And it causes immense distress and pain because it affects the, the penis and therefore it's something that's very private and difficult to talk about. We've got to have a different way of addressing this. I mean, and in some, some countries, I understand they are beginning to move towards a recognition of intersex as being a perfectly legitimate label, which does describe what people have and doesn't require that birth certificates are changed or anything else is altered later in life because at the appropriate time, the sex becomes obvious and the gender and the sex can be aligned. And that seems a very appropriate way of doing it if we can get there. But whatever the law states, many people find it hard to accept intersex people as they are.
I think that there is a difference between a, a male and, and female brain. I would feel as though probably everybody is involved in the grey area in between. The masculinisation programming window is somewhere in the range of 8 to 12, maybe 8 to 13 weeks of gestation. Masculinisation of the brain is beyond 27 weeks. We're not absolutely sure when all the events associated with brain masculinisation occur in humans, but they're late events. So you, you have a divorce between the two. They're both driven by the same hormones, but it shows that you can have a disconnect between the two. Why make documentaries about this now? You are into territory for which, you know, we, most of us, can't relate in any informed way. Uh, and for these individuals, they, they must feel that in our society, which is set up as male and female, not for the, anything in between, that they are suddenly, you know, they don't fit in. By being open about what I am and being prepared to confront just being myself and insisting on being myself, by insisting that people encounter me as a human being and not some kind of label, one compels respect and people do come to understand. When we deal with complex issues, um, we can, as scientists, approach these by teasing out piece by piece all the components of something very complex. And that's essential for the biological part. But there is no way, piece by piece, to take a complex social problem and tease out all the individual thoughts of a society that collectively makes a decision about what is male, what is female, what is gender, what are gender roles, what are appropriate, what are not appropriate, what sexual orientation, what is its relationship to homosexuality, heterosexuality, how do you classify an intersex? Are you going to ask the person to self-declare that they're male or female? What bathroom should they go into? What clothing should they wear? Can an intersex marry? Or are they forbidden because they're intersex to marry nobody and live a celibate life to make other people happy? Because they have a dualism in their mind that there is only a male or a female and don't bother me with gene mutations and chromosomes and biology and nature. I don't care. I only want the truth male or female and keep it precise that's a mistake and getting that across i think is a major point i would love to see emphasized in your production so today i want to tell you to not ever make my mistake don't let anybody tell you who you are or who you should be